Hi, this is Svetlana from Kamui Cosplay and today I'm finally doing something from Honkai Star Rail. So for the release of version 2.1, Hoyoverse asked me to create Acheron's massive katana and it looks amazing. So obviously I also wanted to present it amazing to you, you know, so while crafting I also got like the wig and wanted to wear it like with some casual clothes and like some cool poses and everything. But I thought, ah, oh, that's a little bit boring. So I actually also started crafting parts of the costume like the coat and like the glove and everything and at the end I almost made the whole costume but I think this is what happens with cosplay right but before we get started let's talk about the sponsor of this video Honkai Star Rail is a free-to-play RPG with a turn-based fighting system, gorgeous character designs and an amazing story. You travel across the galaxy on a train-like starship called the Astral Express and get to explore all kinds of stunning worlds. In patch 2.1 you also get to know and unlock Acheron, a mysterious character with massive powers. Her design is amazing and I'm incredibly excited to learn more about her in the upcoming story. Also, the update features additional Panacone areas, further playable characters, and brand new events and missions. Support our project and check out Honkai Star Rail for free. Link in the video description. And now, let's start crafting! So, let's begin with building Acheron's massive katana. To figure out the right size, my husband Benny drew me a blueprint in Adobe Illustrator first. Even though we actually found a 3D model, I was a lot more excited to build everything from scratch out of EVA foam. After all pages were printed out, taped together and cut out, I had a pretty good idea of the actual size and look of the final sword. As you can see though, pulling the sword out of its sheath is literally impossible since it's so long. Still, I really wanted to be able to act like I was quickly pulling my sword in the final transformation video and for that I needed to build at least part of the blade. So the plan was only to create a small fraction of the sword and just fake it. I'm so genius. To begin, I first grabbed a non-plasticized PVC pipe, heated it up, curved it into a grip and started tracing the shape of the blade onto EVA foam. Next on, I added some glue, stacked two layers of foam and sanded a smooth edge with my Dremel. The result was still quite wobbly though, so I wanted to cover it in wobbler to add more durability. Just had to heat it up, wrap it from both sides and cut off excess material. Once I connected the blade to the grip, the true fun could finally begin. To create all the details, I mostly used Benny's blueprint and kept on cutting it into smaller pieces. I used only 2 and 5 mm EVA foam and contact cement glue. By the way, you find links for all products I used in the video description. A lot of people actually think that you need a 3D printer to build stuff like this, but foam works just as well. I personally really love creating stuff with my own hands and as you can see, you really don't need many tools to make something cool. Now only some tiny details were missing. Even though it's not much work, these last steps added a ton of depth to the final look. Anyway, let's make the sheath next. This part had to be a little bit thicker, so I used several layers of 5 and 10 mm EVA foam. Just had to make sure the sword would still fit in. Pro tip, if you have trouble gluing large pieces together, use baking paper for support. Well, and this was the base. You can probably already guess what I did next, so let's speed things up. The sheath was actually rather simple to build and I mostly only had to add some additional detail layers here and there. Benny's blueprint was a great help to get all the shapes right. You can find the file on our website by the way. Finally, I heat sealed the foam to prepare it for priming and this was the finished build. Yes, it was still a bit wobbly, but you know what, it's cosplay, nobody will see it anyway. So I was very happy with the result. And yes, you can see, I could perfectly pull out my fake katana now, haha. <laughs> Next step, priming. As always, I used around 3 thick layers of flex bond to smooth out the surface and hide all visible seams. Then Benny airbrushed the sheath with a white base coat 
while the sword became dark grey. With a little bit of green masking tape, he also added some darker areas onto the end of the sheath. Getting rid of the tape is always so satisfying. The rest of the paint was exclusively done with a fine brush and acrylics by hand. This was just far easier and faster than using a ton of masking tape and the airbrush. You just need a pair of steady hands, which is why Benny is helping me out here. Now just some spray varnish, a pretty purple fabric wrap and next on the sword. By the way, if you're watching this right now and want an airbrush as well, yes, it's an amazing and helpful tool to improve the quality and speed of your work. However, keep in mind that you can also just paint everything by hand as well. Finally, only some white, black and red details were missing and Benny could seal everything with a last layer of satin spray varnish. Well, and here is the finished katana and sheath of Acheron. I think Benny did a very stellar job on the painting and I'm incredibly happy how it turned out. The fake sword pull also looked really great and so it was time for the next step. Building the actual costume. And if you found this interesting and want to get started with crafting yourself, I also have books on how to start with crafting. What a coincidence on comicosplay.com. The book of foam props is uh, full of helpful tips and tricks and tutorials and show you exactly how to get started. And on top of that, we actually have 15 more books and a ton of patterns and crafting guides and like basically everything you need to create something awesome yourself on kamoicosplay.com. Buy my books and thanks a lot for the support. As you maybe have heard, last year we moved to a tiny island in the middle of the Atlantic. Here ordering stuff online can take one or two months, crafting supplies are pretty limited and the few fabric shops that we have barely offer anything useful. Luckily, I'm a crazy material hoarder and prepared myself for years for a special moment like this. Creating a costume from scratch just with the stuff I have already in my fabric boxes. And since I don't enjoy sewing that much, I decided to start with an easy part, the hot pants. I bought a pair of simple leather pants and just cut them shorter. Next I added a zipper and some purple fabric to one leg, lowered the waistband and finished the edges. Better right? Next I cut and sewed a few black belts and added rivets and purple details here and there. Another purple belt, another buckle and fits like a charm. Benny also used our laser cutter to cut me some additional decorations and 3D printed me a super fancy belt buckle thing for the front. Afterwards he only had to sand the print nice and smooth, apply silver spray paint, add some details and seal his work with a satin spray varnish. Looked awesome. Good old Gütermann HT2 fabric glue was everything I needed to mount the buckle on my belt. And this was it. Acheron shorts were done. All made with leftover fabrics. Yay! Now let's make some gloves. I wanted to keep this part really quick and simple and just trace the shape of my hand onto two layers of thicker lycra. Afterwards I added one million pins and sewed all around my markings. I actually used this technique for all of my gloves and as you can see it works perfectly. Just had to cut off the excess material, shorten two fingers and the base for Acheron's glove was ready for all the details. Luckily I also had this absolutely gorgeous blue platter lying around in one of my boxes and it was just perfect to create the blue flap for the glove. So far for the base. The other glove was made quite similar by the way. For the details I worked a lot with tape as it's great to catch the shape and size of any details. Benny drew me then the finished design in Adobe Illustrator and cut everything out with our laser cutter. I think the silver dragon turned out really nice. And with a ton of fabric glue, this is how the flames were attached as well. As the hoarder that I am, I also had the perfect material for the bronze and white part already at home as well. Finally, I made some foam claws using one of my patterns, link in the video description by the way. 
and Benny primed and painted them with silver airbrush colors. Fits like a glove. Oh, and did I mention that I bought these plastic chains like 10 years ago in a crafting shop in Tokyo just because I thought I could use them one day? Well, this was the day. Gloves done. All with leftover and hardened materials. Next up, some foam crafting for the shoulder armor. First, Benny built me a rough 3D model in Blender and then turned it into flat foam patterns. These ones were printed, cut out, traced to 5mm EVA foam and cut out as well. The result was a relatively simple foam puzzle, which I had to glue together next. 3D printing would surely be an option as well, but since it was the only large armor piece of the costume, I tried to craft it very fast and keep it lightweight. Using only foam, it was all built, primed and painted within a single day. Finally, I added an extra velcro belt for the attachment and the shoulder piece was finished. We're getting closer. Now to the bra. As you already know, duct tape is the way to go for patterns. This even works for sexy leather bras. Once I got a nice template, I traced all parts onto some black faux leather, cut out and pinned them together and connected everything with my sewing machine. The result didn't quite fit though, as my taping was a bit sloppy and I just rushed the job. So let's skip all the time I spent making another version and appreciate the perfect fit of this new piece instead. Now I could easily add some glue, a ton of pins and cover up the bra. I also needed some extra belts and began building up the rest of the details including the neck holder on the top. So far so good. Benny also made me a smaller laser cut detail and 3D printed, sanded and painted me this really cool necklace piece. Some more glue here and there and the bra was done as well. And now finally on to the last piece, the jacket. As I just got a brand new dress form, I finally wanted to check if it's suitable to create a duct tape pattern. So I roughly sketched all shapes on, took the tape off, cut everything out and traced all parts onto thin, cheap linen fabric. I added here already some sew allowance, pinned all elements together, sewed it all and this was the result. Not bad for a simple duct tape wrap, right? Next, I freehand sketched the sleeve, prepared this one as well, adjusted the jacket pattern a bit and here we are. I was satisfied. My fabric of choice was this gorgeous satin that I bought ages ago for another costume I never made. But as you can see, it was just perfect for Acheron. Oh, and please appreciate how well trained Zelda and Midna are not to step on my fabrics. So here we had all pattern pieces cut out, then pinned together, sewed, connected with the sleeve and with all finished edges. Looked pretty good so far, right? Then it was time to add all the details. I worked here mostly with my colorful leftover faux leather and attached everything piece by piece. The sleeve required some additional blue and thanks to the cosplay gods I still had just enough for the rest of the costume. Cutting all those parts out was super scary though since I didn't have enough material to even make one wrong step. Luckily the sleeve turned out great as planned and I absolutely love the blue shine of this platter. Found in a random fabric shop years ago by the way. Then I closed this part with a strap and a random belt buckle. Yay! Already looked so good. Now I really love to add lining to all of my costumes even though this step always takes forever. But I just prefer the thicker and heavier final look. I do this always manually with a ton of hand sewing. Ta-da! Nice and clean. Also, Acheron's sleeve has a crazy detailed design and we probably would have ordered it as a custom fabric print. But as mentioned, the shipping times are quite long to Madeira. So instead, Benny made me a vector drawing with all those detailed shapes and we decided to laser cut a ton of pleather instead. And since I know you will ask, you'll find a link for our laser cutter in the video description as well. Anyway, cutting out all those elements took pretty long, but the result looked already very promising. The next step was really scary though, gluing everything on super carefully. 
I have no idea how many tubes of fabric glue I already used, but you can bet your pants that I always have more of them in stock. Wow, done! This step took Benny and me almost two hours of work, just for one side. But this was so worth it. Now the last details were some belts, rivets and buckles. In addition, I also had to glue another flame onto the shoulder, obviously done with more pleather and fabric glue. And finally, the jacket was done. This part was clearly the most challenging one of the entire costume. And I'm really proud it fits so perfectly. Now onto the very last piece of Acheron's costume, the wig. Just like last year for Yelan, I asked my friend Crystal Cosplay to support me and create a wonderful new wig for Acheron. You can actually find the full styling video on both of our Instagram channels. I'm so happy it survived the long way to our workshop and the wig turned out really awesome. All that was missing were just some hair pieces which Benny 3D printed, primed and painted. Then I carefully sewed them on through some tiny drilled in holes. It looks super pretty with everything attached, right? I even made a last makeup test which got me really excited to finally put the costume on. And I guess it's now time to present you the final costume results. Well, here it is, half of my Acheron cosplay. I think presenting my sword this way is far nicer than just wearing regular clothes, right? We simply used our grey photo wallpaper, added colorful LED lights and used the setup to film our transformation video. As always, Benny did an amazing job with the final video and photo. Really hope you like it! So thanks so much for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it, I really hope you enjoyed the final look of Acheron and maybe 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 I will finish her one day. And yeah, I think also this project totally shows that like you know like if you go fabric shopping and let's say you find a gorgeous fabric and let's say you maybe have a husband and maybe this husband is actually called Benny and tells you oh you won't need that like why do you actually want to buy that you know then like you actually get this and then like 12 years later this exactly this fabric is actually the one that saves the whole project you will be right and he will be wrong okay so happy fabric shopping, it's totally fine to be a cosplay material hoarder. Yes. And finally, thanks a lot to Honkai Star Rail and Hoyaverse for this really amazing collaboration. The game is super fun, it's free and you can check it out in the link in the video description down below. Also, let me know in the comments if you have any questions, any suggestions, if you want to see Akron done one day, or if you don't know what to write, just write down Corgi and join the Corgi squad and support us with the mysterious YouTube algorithm. Also, please like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Also, thanks a lot to all our Patreons for the support. You're absolutely amazing. And I think see you very soon in the next video. Bye-bye.